Welcome to the Executive Corrupt Grades podcast with your host, Tim Madden. Hey, if you don't know me, we help those targeting six figures or multiple six figures to give them tactics and strategies to find jobs they love quickly. So if that's you, we're so glad you're tuning in today. Hey, we go live each week inside the Executive Career Network, the largest, fastest growing network on Facebook of directors, VPs, and executives looking to accelerate their career, network with other professionals. Special guest, one of my really, really, really great friends, Patrick Barber. Pat, introduce yourself, man. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Thanks for having me on. Hey, everybody. My name is Patrick Barber. I'm the president of Search Now. We're a, a U.S. and Canadian-based uh, recruitment firm. We specialize in a couple different niche industries. Been in the industry for uh, going on six years now since 2017. Have a ton of experience in both staffing and recruiting at all levels. Have built a team beyond seven figures. And then prior to that, I, I served in uh, various leadership roles in the petrochemical industry, project management, engineering. I'm a degree mechanical engineer. And also, uh, uh, one little thing that I also forgot to add, I also support the Recruiter Empire training program, mentorship program as well for recruiters that are trying to start their own recruiting business. So that's a, that's a little bit about me. So it would be safe to say that You've interviewed a couple people. You have seen all of the pitfalls that happen, not only on the candidate side, but the company side. And let's just say, have you ever dealt with a couple issues when it comes to candidates or companies and trying to connect both of them? Is water wet, Tim? Is water still wet? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I've, I've, had, I've had all of those experiences as recently as this morning. So yeah, definitely. What do you think's the number one reason why recruiters just, and what we're talking about is the recruiter actually spoke to someone and then they never hear back. What do you think's the number one thing of, hey, this is probably why it happened? Yeah, I mean, I think plain and simple, you're not marketing yourself in that interview to speak directly to what it is that the company is, is looking for, what it is, the pain point that this role that you're interviewing for is going to solve within the organization. Most of those job descriptions were written in about five minutes uh, because they've been sitting on, on some HR person's desk for the last week and they were due, right? There's usually not a lot of substance. So as a candidate who's taking an opportunity seriously, you really need to try to uncover what those pain points are, what it is that they're really trying to solve for with adding someone like you to the team. If you're just talking about your experience and what's important to you, oftentimes you're gonna miss what it is that they're looking for and what they're wanting you to tell them. Yeah, it's funny you said that because I always make funny videos about job searching is a lot like dating. So just think about this. Here's just another example of imagine going on a date and saying, hey, this is everything about me and this is what's important to me and this is in me, 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 dude, that girl ain't not probably gonna call you back, right? <laughs> And it's crazy. I obviously coach directors, VPs, and executives in career searches. And you'd be surprised how many people don't ask probably the most important interview question, which is just, you know, I read the job description, but can you tell me, hey, what are you really looking for? And then just be quiet and take notes and ask more questions and then tell them, hey, that's me. I can help you here. Here's where I've done that. Here's the results I've had. But what's crazy is that's the only reason you're on an interview and it's almost never talked about. If you go on an interview and you know exactly what they're looking for, because you ask them, you ask more questions around how that's impacting, what have they already tried, what are some of their business challenges, and you provide like, hey, I've done this successfully in several instances and here's how I've done it using storytelling or the star method or whatever, they're probably going to call you back. The recruiter's probably going to be excited. He's going to be like, hey, hiring manager, you got to meet this person. No doubt about it. One of the things that we share with some of our candidates, the perspective and the mindset that you need to have going into that interview, yes, obviously they're interviewing you, but you also need to have the mindset that you're interviewing them. If you go into it with that mindset and prep for it that way, you should have some pretty clear questions that are going to help you uncover what those things are. And then ask them, obviously, throughout the interview process. But here's the thing. Give them a little taste, a little flavor of the value that you're going to bring to solve whatever issues that they give you. Offer them a solution. Give them a sense that this is somebody that can really come in, hit the ground running day one, and begin to add value and give us relief in whatever it is that we're experiencing. Yeah. What I really wanted to touch on, too, about recruiters being busy 
is think of your average recruiter who works at like, let's just say like even Facebook. How many requisitions, jobs are they working on at one time? Man, who knows, right? Oh. 10 to 50 or 100. I don't even know how many. How many candidates per job? How many people apply online now to Facebook? Hundreds, right? That recruiter does not have time to contact 400 people per requisition times 50. Even when I worked at a top headhunting organization, one of the top in the world, you just don't have time. What you do is you, you log in, you find 10 people, you call them. Hey, the other 390 get a, sorry, Charlie, we already found our people. We found more qualified people when they didn't even see your resume, you know? So I think following up with recruiters, especially if you didn't have a a great interview that's impactful and they remember you. No doubt about it. And you know, first impressions are everything. One thing, there's a free tool out there and I'm so excited about this because it's been yielding some really excellent results for us. It's called Loom. I'm sure, Tim, I'm sure you've heard of it. Loom yeah. Video. It's a free tool. And basically what it is, is it's a way to record yourself in a quick, efficient, concise way and send it as a link that's really nice and marketable. You can see it either in a LinkedIn DM or an email or even as a text message. And so one of the things that has really picked up traction with the candidates that we submit is in addition to a resume and a candidate summary, we're also having the candidates record a 30 second Loom video of themselves yep. introducing themselves to the client, right? To our, to our client, to the hiring company. And it could be something as simple as, hey, Tim, I'm Patrick Barber. Thanks so much for taking the time to review my profile. I've got 30 years of manufacturing experience. I specialize in lean. I, I know different supply chain, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Whatever the key points are, look forward to hearing from you. Um, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. That personalization and that outside of the box connection is really out of the gate going to make you stand out with some of these folks who are inundated with candidates. Yeah. They're going to remember you. And that's going to give you a ton of momentum going in, assuming you're qualified, right? That's going to give you a ton of momentum into their due diligence process. Let's talk about business needs changing. Me and Christina were just talking about this. Sometimes three interviews in, they decide they're not hiring anymore. And the recruiter kind of feels bad. And then talk about business needs changing. And the recruiter doesn't want to say that they closed the position or whatever. Because let's be honest, man, most people and recruiters, especially 20 to 30 years old, they don't like delivering bad news. I mean, who does? Who's excited about delivering bad news, you know? not most people. So talk about business needs changing and how that affects like recruiters not getting back to people because they're busy as well. The recruiter, if you think about it, is a bit of a middleman. And so there's a component of the makeup of a really good recruiter who's a little bit of a people. They want to give the candidate like hope and see them excited and help them land a new opportunity. And they also want to serve their leadership and whoever they report to in the business that they're working. Oftentimes, they're able to help people and it's a win-win and that, that's what makes them feel good. Occasionally, I would say occasionally, not very frequently, occasionally business needs do change. If you're not hearing back, you need to be direct with the recruiter, right? You need, there is a, a little bit of an account if they've kind of ghosted you or gone radio silent. It's okay to layer in a little bit of accountability in a nice way, right? In a professional way to find out what the heck is going on. Simple as, hey, let's talk, just be direct with me. Is this still open? Am I still in consideration? And usually if they're professional, they'll let you know. Now, I'll say this, in my opinion, especially for higher level roles, to go three to four interviews deep and get you know into the ninth inning of a due diligence process, and for all of a sudden the business needs to change, usually in my experience, it's a bit of a cop out, okay? That's likely yeah. not what has happened. Not saying that it never happens, it definitely does, but there's an underlying reason and there's a box that you didn't check or someone that you rubbed the wrong way, or you know maybe there was someone better, but I would encourage you, the important thing here is that you find out why. Try to pull that out of the recruiter. Get them to be candid with you so that you can be better, right? You're gonna have another one down the road, uh, hopefully sooner than later. Number four, which is just kind of like number three, hiring freezes. It happens all the time. Literally, I've had people the day before hiring freeze. That's a real thing, especially right now in today's economic climate. We're knocking on the door of a, a potential recession right now. Right? So obviously that brings in, injects a lot of uncertainty into a number of different industries and a number of different markets. As things change and as things continue to mature and develop, that is a real thing. For leadership of businesses who are stewards of that business, they've got to pay attention to that 
And if there's a piece of data out there that has just hit their desk or something that's been debated or uncovered or whatever the case may be, if it gives them pause, go on a hiring freeze or put the table something that's already in the work. It is what it is. It's a real thing. And honestly, it might be better for you as well. They're not just doing it for themselves, but think of it as, as yourself as well, signing up for something that could end up falling apart. You get in there a month or two, lay off, this sort of thing. The last one could just be indecisiveness of the executive team because what's happened before? They've hired people that haven't worked out. They've hired people which has frivolous spending and they've gone over budget. They've hired, you know, lots of people that let them down. And the hardest thing to do in life is to get someone to make a decision. If you're going to be bringing on someone two, three, four, however much stock options, vacation, all this stuff. Imagine just what's going through that, that individual's minds. When there's indecisiveness in that thing, the recruiter sometimes is following up with those people. And they aren't even hearing anything. And we're not even talking about third party recruiters. We're talking about internal recruiters. You're like, hey, you said you tell this guy if you're moving forward, weeks and weeks and weeks are going by. The guy keeps following up with you. And you're just like, man, I've had it. I followed up six times. I've done everything I can. I'm moving on to the next one. And again, they just feel bad again about delivering that bad news. I think to mitigate the indecisiveness, that risk specifically, circles back to your ability to close them in your interview to make it crystal clear that you are the guy or the girl, right? Or the gal, that you have the solutions that are gonna solve their problems. If you're not speaking directly to that and uncovering what those pain points are, yeah, the risk is out there. You are risking leaving some uncertainty in the minds of the decision makers because they just don't know. But if you're coming in there asking questions, uncovering what the issues are, and then offering a solution, even at the interview, there's nothing wrong with that. You're not actually doing it. There's still a whole execution phase of this strategy or solution that you're offering. But the fact that you're demonstrating to them in real time, as you're asking the questions and they're giving you the answers, to be able to quickly come up with, this is what you need to do, or these are things that I would look at immediately, whether you hire me or not, to implement that could mitigate that or solve or increase or whatever it is that they're trying to achieve, that should almost eliminate any uncertainty that any decision maker is going to have about you because they know that you're already on the page that they're on, right? That you're gonna hit the ground running. That's what you need to project. To Here's what I want to encourage you to think about. You can sit here and blame recruiters, blame companies, do all this, but hey, that is not gonna help your situation. The only thing you can do is how can you position yourself to ensure you do hear back, right? Because you can only control what you can control.